If you're thinking about investing in a short-term rental, you're probably thinking that it could cost thirty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars just to get your foot in the door. And when you're projecting your numbers, I'm sure you're curious how accurate is AirDNA, Mash Advisor, Data.Rabu? Can I actually trust those numbers? I am breaking all that down in this episode coming up next. <music> Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Josh Baldovino, and I am a marketer and real estate investor, and I help others make content that connects and build income through real estate. So today, my goal is to give you a little bit of confidence and show you that, yes, you can make money with short-term rentals. Like, here are my bookings from the last three months. So yes, it's real, it's possible, but there are so many different websites like AirDNA.com that can tell you and estimate how much money you can expect to earn from a listing. The question is, how accurate are these rents that are on screen compared to what different software is telling us the property can generate? Because obviously actuals only happen after you've closed on a unit. So how much can you trust that process? AirDNA is one of the best tools that gives you a comprehensive look at the market. And you can also do so for free. Hmm. It's the website that you can go in and put in a specific address of a property and it can show you what it could potentially um, rent out for. You plug in the address to AirDNA, it'll give you what the occupancy rate is of the area, meaning how often is that uh, is that house booked, so an occupancy rate. It'll also give you how much, what's the average nightly rate charge, so the ADR, average daily rate, or sometimes it's average nightly rate, depending on who you're talking to, multiply ADR by occupancy rate and you get total gross revenue. Although one caveat is that they do give you an X amount of number of free searches. At that point, you'll then have to buy market data. But if you're just jumping into it and you want to run analysis, at least I'd say, I don't know, I've probably done a hundred searches and I haven't capped out or oh, didn't. One thing that I really like about AirDNA is that they don't just give you what the occupancy rate and what the average nightly rate is, but they actually give you also how many units are in the area. So meaning are they how many one bedroom units, two bedroom, three bedrooms, etc. What types of amenities do each of these listings have? And it gives you a more broader picture of the landscape. Even with that data, it, it's still super intimidating and scary as hell to figure out can I actually make money from this? I thought the same thing. So there's a couple things that I wanna help give you to help you give you confidence in some of these tools, but also give you some alternative tools that way you can reinforce your findings and make a more educated decision. At the same time, just don't take it from me. I also asked a few of my real estate investing friends to give me their quick hot takes on how accurate AirDNA is. So that way you can get a more holistic picture. And, I am going to react with you on these videos. Let's roll the clips. So the first guest that I have is Jess White. Jess is a strong ambassador for diving all in and even becoming a full-time real estate investor. He has a handful of short-term rentals himself in Texas and in Oklahoma, and he was one of the first people that I went to to get more information about short-term rentals. So let's see what he has to say about AirDNA is pretty accurate specifically on the occupancy rate that they quote on the website as for like the nightly rates that's really hard to predict the best way to predict those nightly rates is to actually go on airbnb and look and see what other hosts close by you are getting but occupancy for me has been spot on and i just went back and checked that i checked the occupancy rate on AirDNA and i looked at my actual numbers for the past 12 months on one of our short-term rentals turns out it was pretty spot on so and i did use air dna when i was running numbers for uh, the beach house that we bought so yeah all in all i would say it's pretty accurate but also do your due diligence and also look on airbnb for actual rates what other people are getting so that's my two cents Thanks, Jess. Super insightful. I also like that he gave you confirmation in terms of his own listing and what AirDNA says about his listing. So occupancy rate is spot on, but the average nightly rate can vary just based on comps. And that's something I'll touch more on a sum up bit later. The next guest I will bring on, John Hildebrand. And so John is actually a Airbnb official ambassador. So he runs workshops, weekly workshops on how you can start an Airbnb and I wanted to get his hot take on how accurate he finds it as well. Honestly, I think it's pretty awesome tool, 
but it's only a starting point. I like to use it to get a starting point. I would probably say that all of my listings that I look at AirDNA are probably 20 to 25% uh, better than what AirDNA was originally telling me I could do. So it's a great starting point. It will help you buy a place and run some numbers, but it's not 100%. You can always improve on it. Oh, I like it. So he's touching on something that's really fun as well. He's seeing that his nightly rates are higher than what AirDNA is projecting. And he's saying that because he's also, if you haven't seen what his properties are, I will link all of these guests on Instagrams down below and that way you can find their listings. His listings I would consider to be at the top of the market. So one thing to note about AirDNA is that for the most part, on face value, it gives you what the average listing is. Meaning it's taking the good, the bad, the middle, putting it all together. If you know that your property is designed for the higher end clients, you can expect that you'll be 20 to 30% higher, just like John said. All right, this last guest I had is Rafa Loza. I'm sure you've seen him on my channel before if you've been to one of my meetups. He was also a guest on the Bigger Pockets podcast, and he has about, I would say, 50 or 60 or so Airbnb units. So, Definitely good to hear what he thinks about how accurate AirDNA is. When I use AirDNA to measure a market or what I'm looking for in a specific area, I think that in for my specific use of it, I use it to price out specific places, but I use it as the lowest base rate possible that I can make in a specific market. What do I mean? What I mean is that if it tells me that a one bedroom, one bed, one bath apartment um, is going to do 160 average per night. I know that that's the lowest that I can get in that market because once I go in there and I operate and I do my thing to it and I design it the way it's supposed to design, right? The way it's supposed to look, th the type of thing that we need, uh, the customer we're going to attract, I can get a certain percentage higher, right? AirDNA is not really good because uh, in terms of figuring out exact nightly rates. For example, if you have a one bed, one bath here and a one bed, one bath next to it, and this one rents on Airbnb for only five days out of the week and the other 25, it was a direct booking. It doesn't account for the direct booking revenue. Therefore, when it takes both of them, the one on the right that did all Airbnb, it's gonna average it out together. It's gonna say, well, there's a certain um, level of vacancy, which might not be the case, right? But AirDNA is great to give you a starting point of what you can expect in a specific market. Thank you, Rafa. Whoa, some awesome pro tips there. I wanted to also record kind of what my live reactions were so that I can give you some feedback based off of their videos live. Um, so a couple of things that I like. One, he uses it as a base rate. He's all he's also designing to the nines, right? So he's not trying to be middle of the pack. He wants to be at the top of the pack. The other pro tip that he said, and I really like that he mentioned that about the direct booking site. That's actually something I haven't considered. So it's good to also network, right? So that, that way you can see they could be missing some revenue there or AirDNA may not be scraping the full picture because they're not getting that data that is happening from other platforms. So all in all, yes, you should be using AirDNA, but you should also be using other platforms just to get an average. So I would also look at things like Mash Advisor or data.rabu.com to then get a sense of what are all these other avenues saying and how do those numbers compare? So take the software that is scraping and pulling averages and put them together. So if you're either highly considering a market or potentially already locked under a contract, now it's time to validate. Connect with other operators. Like That is the best thing you can do. Tour their units, figure out what they did right, what they did wrong, and actually develop a meaningful relationship with them. Once you get to that point, other investors are willing to help and share numbers. Like I share all of my numbers on our unit. So if you have a question about Yucca Valley and Joshua Tree, ask me. I guess we kind of got to be friends first. But anyways, once you can see their back end and their bookings, that gives you a lot more confidence that I could potentially do this too. The last tip I will give you, so you're looking at these data sources. You're then trying to connect with other operators and then look at the competitor listings yourself. So go on to Airbnb, to VRBO, to booking.com, to whatever site and try and book the neighboring houses in your area. And again, just like you're running comps in the MLS, figure out the beds and baths, the amenities, and search for properties that are gonna be about the same finish level that you have. And from there, you can get a sense of how booked they are, what they're actually charging, and you can even see their cleaning fees and other fees they have attached to their listing so that you can get an actual holistic picture. But do all of those. You're not just relying on one platform because if you're relying on one platform, you're probably not seeing the full picture. So get as many inputs as you can so that way you can make a calculated decision. 
Anyways, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a like and please share it because one, it helps the algorithm and I put a lot of effort into these videos. So that is the one thing that really means a lot is if you do like, and of course, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And if you've made it this far, let's have some fun. I wanna know that you are a super fan. Can you comment down below above average? And that way I know that you are an above average person. You're my, my above average friend, all that good stuff. Anyways, thank you so much. If you wanna see more videos about short-term rentals, I have a whole playlist up here. Or if you're curious about what is the best mattress to put in your short-term rental, I'll also put that guy right here. All right, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.